She's originally from Illinois, just across the river from St. Louis. Her dad was a farmer, so she grew up on a big farm. She's got the loudest pig call you've ever heard. <laughs> you could hear her from a mile away. The pigs would come running. Her mom was a cook for all sorts of different kitchens around town. She was the youngest of three girls for forever. And when she was 12, Kurt came along, her little brother. She was always top of her class, always did well in school, enjoyed math and science, that sort of thing. So no surprise that she went on to be a math teacher. She went to Fried Hardman back when it was Fried Hardman College, and then went on to finish at Oklahoma Christian. Got her teaching degree and certification. She was gonna go into the teaching field, but her roommate really wanted to go to Indonesia and had a sponsoring church, but the sponsoring church said, we won't send you unless someone goes with you and we think Sarah would be a good choice. And so that's how she ended up in Indonesia on the mission field. It was kind of a accident, almost. She lived in Indonesia for two years, taught English through the Bible, ended up falling in love with teaching people about Christ through the Bible, doing one-on-one -on -one Bible studies, all of that. So she came back and her sister Donna had just moved from the New England area down to Houston. So that's what brought her kind of to this area. And she went to Central, met my dad, and they dated for a couple years. And then she taught the junior high girls class at the time at the church. And my dad always has always done the count. He always did the count around church. He'd go and count how many people were in the classrooms. And so one day he came by to do the count and he dropped off a note and a box and walked back out the door. The girls got all excited because it was a ring box. And she looked at the class and she goes, I bet it's empty. And they're like, no, no way. He wouldn't do that to you. So she read the note and it was a proposal and she opened the box and it was empty. And so her whole class of like 15 junior high girls got up and chased him to the parking lot where he had been waiting to like secretly have the one-on-one -on -one proposal time. And they chased him to the parking lot and demanded the ring, which is typical my dad and typical their relationship and how well they knew each other. She taught junior high math when I was born in Texas City. That was her first teaching job. She got a job at South Houston High School and was there 24, 25 years before retiring. She loved it. She loved teaching. She loved teaching the odd math classes that no one else wanted to teach. World Bible School contacted her because they were building a physical school in Indonesia, in Jakarta. But they contacted her because they knew that she had spoke Indonesian, that she'd spent time in Indonesia, and they were wanting to build a physical school where the students could come and instead of corresponding, they could sit in classrooms and do more Bible study type stuff. We were on our way to being missionaries in Indonesia. We sold our house, we sold our cars, we had our container, we were all ready to go. And about a month before we left, they got a new president in Indonesia and the government revoked our visas. That's really when she started to dive really hard into the World Bible School correspondence. I don't even know what, how many countries her students are in now throughout Africa and Indonesia, but she kept a database of the Africa correspondence with how many numbers there were, students had numbers and all. And there's over 10,000 in that database. That doesn't include the ones that she had when I was in high school and total I'd say closer to 14, 15,000 that she's had some sort of impact. When we came here to Southeast, she learned about all the stuff we do with Hope for Haiti's kids and all of that. And so that's when the backpacks and the dresses, and she was like, well, what can we do to send with the Christmas boxes? And what can we do to send there as well? And she's always had some little sewing project, but the one here she really enjoyed because she had a group. She, here she really felt like we all participate and we all do it together. And that brought her a lot of joy. She's always willing to have a Bible study with people. When she met someone, she got to know them, found a need, hey, you want to come and have a Bible study with me? And would sit down one-on-one. -on -one. She wouldn't ever, I think, say, I was put on earth to take care of Larry, but she definitely saw it as a purpose. 
no one expected him to live past 20 when he was growing up. And so she really made a point of making sure he lived the best life. She made a point to make sure that he came first. If there was something that she could do that would help someone else, she would do it, no matter what it was. Pushing a car in the rain, through the flooded streets. We did that so many times. Changing flats in the rain for others. I made a point to call her every day on my home way home from work. That was our tradition. Because I knew there'd be a day I couldn't. She was the faith giant in the household. And she was the one that always said, there's nothing that I couldn't do in life. She never looked and said, my gender prohibited me from anything. She never said, my academic status prohibited me from anything. She did that with her students as well. And she always reminded people that they were God's child. And that trumped everything. She'd always be there, no matter how hard it was or how much it put her out. The kind of loyal friend you always want. How many people survive breast cancer, heart ablations, brain aneurysm, and still keep going and keep fighting and keep having dreams and keep desiring to serve others. She wanted to keep fighting so she could keep serving.